Once again, I want to introduce myself. I'm Solomon Bihar. I'm one of the pediatric ER docs at Long Beach Memorial. I am joined by Christine Thing, who is uh, a assistant professor of pediatrics at UCLA and second year UCLA peds resident, Emma Burdekin. Uh, both of these guys are very involved with the AAP. Um, Christine is the, let me see if I get this right, the representative for the early career pediatrician uh, group, and you are the resident representative for our local chapter, which is really exciting. Uh, we're here today to, you know, you guys are pretty much sold, uh, but, but we're here to talk about why one should join their local AAP chapter and what it can do for you in your practice and in your professional life. Uh, I want to start just, Christine, tell us about like the history of the AAP. Like, when was it founded? Why was it founded? Yeah, so the American Academy of Pediatrics, or the AAP, was founded during the 1930s. And what makes this organization so special is that it is an organization that was founded by pediatricians for pediatricians. It's really focused on making sure that pediatricians stay well aware of current clinical practice guidelines, that they follow the evolution of pediatric medicine, um, there's advocacy for children's health, and I think what makes the AAP in particular particularly special is that not only does it advocate for pediatricians, it also advocates for children's health. So you have both things, part of a special interest group sort of um, for children's health and then for the pediatricians themselves too. Um, and the AP is headquartered in Illinois. And I will say that I've had the opportunity of visiting the AP headquarters and it's truly an inspiring place to be. They also have a history hall where all this information was gathered. Nice, nice. Um, so. I think the theme of the day seems to be politics and voting, and as politics, as all issues are local. So can you guys tell me about what our local chapter, uh, what sort of initiatives have they been up to? Uh, why don't we start with you, Emma, and then we'll pass it over to Christine, just to tell us what's happening in this chapter and how it can kind of affect your practice. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I think we think about the AP being at many different levels, you know, the national level, the district, the local, and of course, we're most involved here in our local chapter two level. And so um, I think we started to hear earlier today in the symposium about some of the committees that the chapter actually has, um, one of them being the advocacy committee that really focuses on, you know, what are the local initiatives that we have and what's important to us in our local chapter here. Um, the example that always comes to mind for me that we also heard about a little bit earlier is, um, you know, thinking about vaping and tobacco bans, you know, um, our local chapter pediatricians were the ones that were advocating for things like the flavored tobacco ban that went into place last year. And we know pediatricians in our chapter who participated in those meetings. And I think it could be so powerful for local pediatricians who are generally very respected and trusted individuals in the community to really raise their voice and speak for this population of children who, again, can't vote. And so it can be really powerful for their pediatricians to be kind of standing up for them in their name. Um, and so that's kind of some things that I think about um, at the local level, we're also able to partner with all the other chapters in California, the four chapters. And, you know, we have the district level, our district nine and the national level. And so, you know, these initiatives span, you know, the state, they span the country. And so it can be really powerful for all those voices to come together. Um, and then I think you also asked about, you know, how does this actually influence our practice? And um, one issue that I think about a lot and is something that is really important to me and comes up in clinic really frequently are concerns around mental health. Um, and so in talking with, you know, parents, caregivers of children who have concerns related to mental health, I'll sometimes get questions, you know, it seems like this is becoming more and more prevalent. You know, I know that my child is struggling with this. Their friends are struggling with this. You know, what's being done about this? Like, why why is this becoming more and more of a concern? And um, I think it can be really validating for families when we say exactly, you know, we're noticing this as well. The AAP actually declared a mental health crisis in 2021 because we were seeing all of these changes and these concerns. And um, that is led to even more kind of support from the AAP for policies that expand mental health care. And we've been seeing that over the years. Um, and it's been really, really gratifying too to kind of see those concerns trickling down into our education as well. Um, I know Christine and I are both involved, um, you know, currently in um, upcoming in 2025, there'll be the required mental health rotation and residency. And I think that has stemmed from a lot of this discourse and discussion. Um, and I think it can be really powerful to realize, you know, we're making these policy changes in response, but we're also educating our future pediatricians to be able to take care of these concerns. Nice. And I think, you know, from a trainee standpoint, I just remember being thrown like the AP was just a given. Like, you know, you, you started residency and the AP was just part of your life. Uh, Christine, you have chosen to, you know, really take a leadership role in here. What what sort of got you involved on that level to say, you know, what, I want I want more out of this because I know it has more to offer. 
Yeah, so my first experience with the AAP was actually attending the National Conference and Exhibition as a medical student. Um, similar to a lot of medical students who might be listening, you're sort of thinking, oh, do I want to do family medicine? Do I want to be a surgeon? Do I want to be an emergency room doc? And so I attended um, this first conference as being the pediatric interest group leader. You get the opportunity to attend a professional societies conference. So I attended the AAP where I met other folks. Back then it was called the Section on Medical Students Residents residents and fellowship trainees, the SOM serfs, like little, you know, we're little blue creatures that are running around. And when I met everyone, I was like, these are my people. I enjoyed working with the meeting, the other trainees, there were other advisors and leaders who were there and really shared their passion about pediatrics. And so following medical school, when I entered residency, being the resident delegate for the AP was one of one of my goals and the opportunity to do that and then be a part on the section on pediatric trainees and now being in the section on early career physicians I think um, it's been very impactful to me to have this organization because it has become my professional home it's provided me a great network many mentors advisors so I guess you'll say I've, I've you know I've, I've been raised by the AAP more or less right now I find for most of my clinical dilemmas and questions they're the first resource I turn to is like, well, what did the AP say about this? I want to know what their guidelines are, what their recommendations are, because I think that sets the tone for everything. And so, you know, as a leader in this, it's, it's kind of exciting that you get to be that um, outside. Well, to, uh, actually, I want to ask you in, on your attending level now, like, give me an instance of when y your involvement with AP has directly affected your clinical experience. Yeah, I think as we've seen with you know morning reports and noon conferences there's always things that are changing you're really difficult to to keep up right and stay what's current and through the AAP through things like this like the symposium through national conference and exhibitions you learn about well what are the new clinical practice guidelines and what are things that I should be doing or I shouldn't be doing I think good examples of that are things like fever in a neonate, right? A febrile infant. Is it automatically that you go when you do a lumbar puncture? Well, actually, no. There's some there's some risk stratification of it, too, now. And even the conversation about babies that you're concerned about having jaundice and hyperbilly, where um, there is like risk stratification that's tied. And in the sort of talking about breastfeeding failure, we now talk about suboptimal intake and, and what's tied into that. So I think a lot of these guidelines, as you mentioned, that have been put forth by the AP have been really a result of many of their councils and committees and sections coming together and creating these guidelines and really informing what we do in pediatric practice. So it's really helped me, um, one, be a, a well-informed clinician and two, also an educator for our students and our residents. Right. I have to say every single shift they bring me cultures and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do with this culture? I'd never heard of this bug. And then thankfully this magical red book appears that the AP puts out and I'm like, Oh my God, I don't know what I would do without this. Like it's literally the guidance that I depend on every single day, like every single shift that I do. So um, there's just wonderful resources. Um, Emma, you mentioned that you are super into advocacy and that part of the AP had been appealing to you. Outside of your local chapter, what sort of opportunities does the AP offer uh, if you want to get involved on sort of a bigger picture for advocacy for kids? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, Christine was starting to mention, um, you know, the National Symposium is a great introduction, I think, especially, you know, for my lens and thinking about trainees. And exactly like Christine, I had my first experience really being that pediatrics interest group leader and really getting to get exposure to this fantastic community of pediatricians there. And so I think in that way, you can connect with that community and really understand, you know, what initiatives am I interested in pursuing? Um, and then there are things like the Legislative Day, which I know Christine has had a little bit more personal experience with. So I can kind of pass the mic to her to talk a little bit about that. Um, but there are a number of different opportunities. You know, there's um, actually an internship available as well for medical students and residents um, focused on advocacy. And so that's another opportunity to explore. And so I think there are a number of different opportunities depending on what specific interest you might have and how you want to gain that interest. But maybe, Christina, you want to talk a little bit about the legislative day? I feel like we should call Richard Pan back. I, I think he, he might have a few words to say about that too. Hi, Richard. <laughs> Dr. Pan is 
really famous at the California legislative days. Um, so I think through the AP, there's opportunities to learn how to be an advocate for children's health. So there is media advocacy training. There's also just learning about the different policies and legislations that exist. How do you talk to lobbyists, right? If you have a sit down meeting with your um, state senator or state assemblyman, how to carry those conversations coming in with an agenda, you know, what is your ask from the society? For us in California, we are one of four chapters within um, the AAP. So we're able to come together from Northern California to Southern California and really be this strong voice together at the state level. And I think that's really when you think about, okay, you know, I'm in my clinic in Los Angeles, you know, this is a topic that's really important to me, but it seems so daunting to bring that up to a government level. So being a part with other pediatricians who are going to the Capitol together, um, engaging in this work together, it just makes it feel a little bit more doable than just you know, me sitting in, in front of my, my computer. Right. Now, I, I think if you're the individual practitioner sitting in your office, seeing all these overwhelming problems, it, it can be like, yeah, what can I do? I'm just a single person, but this group uh, allows sort of that big group momentum to make things happen. Um, for those people, like you guys got involved very, very early on, uh, but for those who are sitting out here listening to you guys, and they want to get more involved. What, what's the first steps to sort of be involved to make those differences that, that you dream about in your office? Yeah, I think being involved at the chapter level is a really great way to start. This is where a lot of the local grassroots initiatives are born. You have the opportunity to, let's say you're really passionate about trauma-informed care and talking about adverse childhood experiences. Well, we have a committee that's dedicated to that. Or um, we talked about tobacco cessation or climate health, right? We have committees that are, that are part of it. So if you are early in your career, you're looking for professional experts who have written papers and given talks about this, you would be a part of committee that's doing that. At the same time, it's also a nice way to connect with other pediatricians within your, your local setting, whether that's at the city level or at the county level. So I think that the local AAP chapter is a really great way to go. And there's also events that aren't um, focused on continuing medical education, just more focused on getting to know one another, to socialize, to network. So it also makes it less, less isolating. And uh, for those um, veterans among us, myself included, like if we haven't been involved, is it easy to get involved or is it sort of, uh, it, I see a lot of young people up here, but, but I also see some veterans out here who've been in, uh, like how does someone who's out there in practice, they've established and maybe they're like winding things down, but they stay, still want to stay involved. What are, what yeah, I think absolutely. It's, it's a matter of you can call our executive director on the phone. He has his phone number on the flyers. You can log on to the website and join um, through their similar providing your email address and your contact information. I think for our members who are later in the career as an early career physician and with Dr. Bergen here, who's a resident, you know, we really look to you as our mentors and our advisor is able to to help us um, in our pediatric tract as well too awesome anything else you guys want to say about yeah the impact that joining and being a part and active in your local chapter has had on you guys um, I think again it's just really been this such a fantastic experience being a part of this community and I think that that's what it's all about when we're trying to make change is really building those communities and I think you know we were talking about you know if you've been in practice for a long time how does that look but um, something that I've been really interested in being in this role has been trying to get trainees involved early like we were lucky to be and so um, I just want to encourage all the trainees out there you know as a medical student as a resident you know becoming a part of your local chapter can really open up doors for you if you're really interested in these um, types of issues and so just wanted to encourage everyone to consider that as an option as well. Awesome. Christine, you have any last thoughts? Uh, my last thing is that if there's something that you are really passionate about that doesn't currently exist in the local AAP chapter, what a way to get involved and really bring that initiative to the forefront as well. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing your experience and thank you to the chapter AP2 for uh, letting Peds Wrap uh, invade and, and live podcast to the, the greater world out there. We appreciate you and uh, I'm glad you guys are advocating for kids and everyone here is and thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.